And with this door right here, my dirt hut is now finished. This is the build that we're going to be transforming in today's video. As you can see, we have got tons upon tons of coarse dirt, we have got loads of stone, we've got cobblestone, we have got grass making its way around occasionally with some bone meal on top, we have got a chimney, which is actually going to double up as an explosive exit, which is going to be very exciting indeed, and we also have a little fenced garden out the front. So this is going to be the perfect build for doing all of our transforming. For the time being, I want you guys to ignore the gigantic hole that I've taken out in the garden because that's going to be a project for later on in the video. But for the time being, we're actually going to be getting things started on the inside. And the first thing that I want to do is create a shulker box storage system. In this place, space is fairly limited, as you can see, and there's no room for massive storage systems. So I think a cycling shulker box storage system could actually be really very beneficial. So we're going to have a button, then we're going to have a regular piston facing across just like this, and then we're going to have a block down at the bottom. We are going to be taking that out. We're going to have a dropper facing upwards, and then a dispenser facing upwards as well, which is going to be pushing all of our shulker boxes upwards. Then all we have to do is run some hoppers going around like this, and they're going to go around like that, and then we're going to have a hopper right there, and that's going to be picking up all of the shulker boxes and putting them down into the shulker box storage. Now, for all of the redstone, we are going to have to pop down into this little hole right here. There's not too much space to work with, but the first thing we want to do is we want to run some repeaters running around like this into our bottom dropper, and that's just going to be going around like that. Four ticks on each one of the repeaters, and we should see that if we place in some redstone dust, that will be directly beneath our stone button right here. So eventually, through the timing circuit, these droppers and then this dispenser are going to get activated. Now off in this direction, we just want to chuck in a sticky piston with a block on top. Then we're going to have a repeater set to two ticks. That's going to be running out into a redstone torch, which is going to run a redstone line across like this and up into all of our hoppers. And that's going to be controlling the shulker boxes. And believe it or not, that is actually everything completed. So we should see that the piston will extend. And then we also hear the click and also this redstone unpowers and then repowers. Now it is time to actually fill in all of the shulker boxes. So first things first, we're going to place in one up at the top and then in the rest of the hoppers, we're just going to place one shulker box in each one. So this one is going to have an orange one, this one's going to have a magenta one, this one is going to have a light blue one and this one right here is going to have a yellow one. And you should see that because all of these hoppers are powered, they will all stay in place and when we hit the button and they briefly get unpowered, all of them will shift across by one hopper. So this should get broken. And then we get the new shulker box. And the new shulker box. And so on and so forth. It's essentially like a shulker box cycling system. And eventually, we should make our way back around to white. So you can store whatever you want in each one of these. And then you hit the button. And you get the other one. And you can check through all of the storage in there. Perfect. Next up, we've got a tiny redstone build. We've got one of these in pretty much every single one of the designs, but I absolutely love them, and that is the tiny armor equipping station. Then to fill in all of those dispensers right there, all we have to do is get one piece of each set of armor, chuck those in the inventory, and then chuck those inside each one of the dispensers. And then all you have to do, if you want more than that, is fill in all of these with boots, all of these with leggings, all of these with helmets, and all of these with chest plates. And if we walk inside, hit the button, Boom, I'm looking good. As you can see right here, I've placed in a little storage system right next to the door and I mean, it's all right. We've got eight double chests in total, but it would be nice if we had something just a tiny bit bigger. So what I've done is I've cleared out a massive space down underneath and we are going to double the size of this thing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is just quickly place in all of our double chests and then we're going to have the trap chest down at the bottom. And this is what's known as the drop down storage system. So down at the bottom here, we are going to have a handful of double piston extenders. These are going to make their way across like this. Then we're going to have the blocks on their faces. And then these ones are just going to be single piston extenders with the blocks on their faces. And what we're going to do is make it so that we can retract these blocks so that we can drop down and actually gain access to the chests that are down at the bottom here. I personally think this thing's genius. For stage one of the wiring, we are going to be powering all of these pistons down at the bottom here. And then we're also going to be powering all of these pistons in one redstone line. So we just need to reach our way across and place in all the redstone there, and that's going to make its way across the top just like that. Then down at the bottom here, we're going to place in a repeater, and that is going to be taking the redstone output into the bottom pistons to do the pulse extension. So we're just going to have a block up like this, and then redstone going across the bottom there with repeaters set to four ticks, 
running into each one of these. But we're also going to take that redstone line upwards, and that's going to be going across the back just like this, and then we're going to have double lines of repeaters. Now, the reason that we're using double lines of repeaters as opposed to single repeaters is because, unfortunately, these trap chests right here, so some of them are trap chests. If we had redstone on this line of blocks, that would power the redstone, which means that it actually breaks our redstone circuit, which is a little bit of a shame. So you just run that across like that, and that should be everything powered for that side of things. For the final little piece of the puzzle, all we have to do is create the falling edge monostable circuit right here. So we just place a dropper and a hopper and then an item on the inside of that dropper and then we take a comparator output from that hopper right there. That's going to be running up into this redstone line, then a block right there and then a repeater set to four ticks running into this redstone circuit right here. And that should be the final block retraction, which means that if we flick this lever, we should get the full extension and also, Full retraction. That thing is working absolutely perfectly. So now we can cover up everything, make sure to fill in all of these blocks, make everything look really nice, prim and proper. And I'm chuffed to bits with this thing. I think it's brilliant. For small spaces, we now have twice as much storage as we otherwise would have. Now I seem to remember at the start of today's video, I mentioned that we were going to have an explosive exit to this place. Now that's kind of true, kind of not. We're not going to be using TNT, but we are going to be using slime blocks. We're going to be launching ourselves out the top of the chimney. And the way that we're going to be doing that is placing a slime block right there. Then we're going to have some obsidian there. We're going to take out both of these blocks. And we're also going to have some obsidian out the back as well. And then over here, we're going to have a block up like this with a sticky piston, a slime block on its face, and then another sticky piston facing across. So we're going to be launched upwards and then launched upwards again so that we can actually make this distance. Now, one thing that I will say is, is that we are going to have to do a tiny bit of terraforming, I guess you could say, to our little dirt hut. So we need to remove any block that is actually going to come into contact with the slime block. So all of those and all of those. And if you want to, you can actually test this out by placing in this and then placing in this and just making sure that it doesn't pull any of the blocks around. First things first, we need to do all of the wiring for our bottom slime block. So we're going to place in a button on this block right here, then a hopper with redstone dust on top. Now, the reason that we're using a hopper isn't to pick up items or anything like that. It's because the hopper is the only block in the game, as far as I know, that is both transparent and also immovable. So it's not going to power this piston down at the bottom, but it's also not going to be moved by our sticky piston. But anyway, we're then going to take two ticks running out like that. That's going to be going into this block right here. We're going to have to break some dirt here, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue. We're going to have some redstone dust, then a sticky piston facing upwards with a block on its face, and then a repeater set to two ticks, which is going to be running into that immovable object right there. Now, actually down underneath, we need to place in some redstone dust and then the immovable object on top. And that should mean that we'll get a very fast extension and retraction through this piston here. Stage number one is now complete. Stage number two, also known as the slightly more complicated stage, is to do all of these piston mechanics. So the first thing we're going to do is chuck in two repeaters, both of them set to four ticks, and they're going to be running across like this. Now, once again, we are going to have to do some changes to the dirt inside our dirt hut, and we are actually going to have to fix up some of the holes that we create right here, but you want to place a redstone torch up at the top, and then a repeater set to four ticks, running into that sticky piston right there. So that is that piston extension done. Now we just need to do the other side, and that should just be a repeater set to four ticks. We're then going to take a repeater set to four ticks, a repeater set to two ticks, that's going to be running up and across like this. And we're going to have redstone going across the top right there. And we want a repeater and then redstone dust right there. Now everything should be fully completed. So let's just quickly patch in all of the holes that we've created. I believe there's another one behind this block right there, but I can't actually get access to it. But if we hit this button, extension, and then that extension as well. Brilliant. Now let's give this thing a tester. So we get fired upwards, and then fired upwards once again, and we land on the top of the chimney. Or alternatively, if you have the Elytra, then you can also use that to take off out the top, which I personally think would be absolutely brilliant. So that right there is the interior all done and dusted. Now you may have noticed that I've been placing these kind of borders around the place, and that's actually showing off the borders of all of the redstone contraptions. And as you can see, this is the only zone that doesn't have a redstone contraption 
underneath it or on top of it. So we have a six block area on the inside of this place. I'd say that's fairly impressive. But anyway, if we pop out the front, you can see we do still have this absolutely massive gaping hole. And that is because we're going to be filling this thing in with a retractable swimming pool. Yes, a retractable swimming pool. Now, stage number one is to actually place in the double piston extender, and that is going to be going in line with this fence post right here. And if you do want to build this, you are going to need a seven by six by six area. So pretty enormous, but also it's going to look pretty awesome. Now this design right here is going to be using slime blocks. You just want to place in a three by two area of slime blocks and then all of your grass blocks on top. Now, for those of you who are observant, you may notice that that is 12 blocks in total, which means that this bottom piston cannot extend because that right there is the 13th block. So we have to do some kind of wild double piston extender action. This block is going to be our input. We're going to have redstone going down like this, a repeater set to two ticks running into that bottom piston, and then an observer facing across, which is going to be powering this piston first. So this piston is going to spit out its blocks, then that sticky piston is going to extend, pushing that piston upwards, and then we're going to have an AND gate, or an ABBA gate, which is known as a pulse extender, down at the bottom right here, which is going to extend out the pulse of the bottom sticky piston, and this redstone line right here is going to power the top sticky piston using that immovable object. But we are also going to take a redstone output from our observer. That's going to be going across like this, repeater set to four ticks, and then a repeater set to one tick right there, and then another repeater set to four ticks with an immovable object down at the bottom. And that should be everything all done and dusted. So if we power this, double extension, completely flush with the floor, and then we retract it. You can see that everything retracts and gets brought downwards. So that is the start of our drop down swimming pool. Now, I've actually had to do a little bit of extra clearing right here to make way for the input because we're also going to have two sticky pistons next to these grass blocks right here, which will allow us to actually get into the swimming pool. So then we want to create a three by two area and you guys know the drill, we're going to be building a pulse extender. So two comparators facing in both directions with redstone just a little bit like that. Then we're going to be taking redstone going across like this, a repeater running into the pulse extender, then we're going to have some redstone dust right there and that is going to be our input going into the whole circuit. So now we just need to run a redstone line downwards and underneath all of this and make its way into the edge of the pulse extender. Now that is a little bit easier said than done. We're probably going to have to punch out a few more blocks right here, but we're going to wrap it round and it should make its way into this block just over here. So we're going to want a repeater around about there, some redstone dust and then some redstone dust just going around like that, making its way all the way round. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. We flick the lever. Everything extends. It is now completely flush with the floor. This thing is looking absolutely glorious, if I do say so myself. And then when we flick the lever once again, we get the stairs and we also get everything dropping down. Now the thing is, is that you could potentially use this as an armory system. So you have got plenty of space for doing all of the armory bits and pieces that you guys know and expect, like crafting benches, you've got room for enchanting tables, anvils, you've got chests down at the bottom, ender chests, you could go completely crazy with it. But I just fancied building a drop down swimming pool. I thought that seemed like a really, really cool idea. So now what you want to do is you actually want to grab yourself some immovable objects, for example, obsidian, and we're going to be placing that in line with all of these dirt blocks down at the bottom. So they're going to be making their way around like this because we need to make way for all of the water that is going to be flowing in. So we need a block there, and then we just want to block everything off, block everything off right there just across like this and make sure that everything is blocked up and you have something that looks a little bit like that and then you just want to grab yourself a water bucket place in all of the water like this and it should all turn into an infinite water source so once again flick the lever and that pushes everything away flick the lever again and swimming pool I think that looks amazing. I don't know about you guys, but I love the thought of having a retractable swimming pool. I want one in real life. Now for something a tiny bit more daft, which I know what you're thinking, you know, more daft than a drop down swimming pool, but I wanted to create a redstone tree. Now that's, yeah, that's, 
I mean, it's not the best tree in the world, but it's nothing too bad. And we're going to fill in the middle blocks with redstone lamps. Let's just place in a redstone lamp right there. Just make sure that it's in line with the trunk and then redstone lamp right there. Then we're going to drop down a couple blocks and we're going to place in some redstone dust and then a daylight sensor. And then in each one of these blocks, we're just going to place in a log. So each one of these is going to have a log next to it and that will be powering all of the redstone lamps. So now we can just cover up everything Make sure that you can't see any of that stuff. And if you want to fill in this block right here, I would actually suggest getting yourself some green stained glass as opposed to leaves. If you use leaves, then it's actually going to stop the system from working properly. We just want to switch it over into night mode, place in your glass up at the top. And then if we set the time to, say, for example, nighttime, the little tree lights up. And I think it looks really, really cool. But anyway, final redstone contraption of today's video. Done. <laughs> that is the entrance into this place. So now we can get into the garden. We have got the sewing pool. Everything is looking cool. So to summarize everything that we've done in today's video, we have got the fence gate. We have got the drop down swimming pool that we can extend and retract. We have got the redstone activated tree. Then if we pop inside here, we've got a whole number of different things. A drop down storage system that allows us to gain access into 100% more chests. We get twice as many chests. That's how much we get access to. And then we have got the armor equipping station, which makes me look like an absolute boss. We have got a shulker box storage system that cycles through various shulker boxes and allows for even more storage. And then over out the back here, we have got the player launcher system, which shoots us out the top of the chimney. I would say that is a pretty tricked out dirt hut. I'm very, very happy with this thing. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.